In 2018, Google announced Smart Shopping as a goal-optimized campaign type that combined elements of remarketing and standard shopping all in one campaign. A ton of advertisers created these campaigns, started seeing great results, and then Google announced that Performance Max would replace Smart Shopping. If you're experiencing a bit of buyer's remorse that you had to make the switch, I'm going to show you how you can make your Performance Max campaign act like a smart shopping campaign. It's actually really simple and only takes a few minutes. I'll walk you through the entire process and make sure you stick around to the end because I have a freebie that I'm gonna give you to help you get better online marketing results. Let's dive in. Hey friends, my name is Scott Redgate, and if you're new to this channel, I'm passionate about helping small businesses make more and spend less and show you that you have what it takes to manage your own online marketing campaigns. Today, I'm gonna to share why you might want to make your Performance Max campaign act like a smart shopping campaign, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. If that sounds interesting, let's jump into the slides. All right, so we're gonna talk about how you can turn your Performance Max campaign back into a smart shopping-like campaign. And before we do that, we need to talk about some of the high level differences between smart and performance max and why you may want to do this. So if you want a deep dive between standard smart shopping and performance max, I'll provide a link in the description below to another video that I created on the topic. But here are some high level differences between smart and performance max. So with smart shopping campaigns, you have less placements than you do with Performance Max. So Performance Max can appear across Google's entire suite of products, and I'll have a screenshot on the next slide of what that looks like. Um, with smart shopping, you create ads, whereas with Performance Max, you create asset groups. So you create assets that then Google can assemble in different ways and then show them across all of the placements um, inside of their network. And then the last difference that I'll highlight is that smart shopping campaigns have no impact on search campaigns, whereas Performance Max does impact search campaigns. There's a dynamic search component to Performance Max um, to create search ads for you on your behalf. So the big question is why would you want to do this? Why would you want to revert your Performance Max campaign or make it act more like a smart shopping campaign? Well, the reason for this is if you truly want to highlight your core products, the products that you're linking to from your Google Merchant Center, and you want that to be the focus of attention, okay? So smart shopping campaigns, since there were less placements, most of the clicks that you received from smart shopping were a result of people clicking your products inside of Google search, those typical product listing ads. But with Performance Max, there's more placements, right? So the, they include Google Discover and Google Maps. So what happens is there will be less focus on your products and then Google will create more generic advertisements for you that might lead to places like your homepage or might lead to your category pages. But there's just less focus on the products overall. So it might be something like 80% of the clicks inside of Performance Max go to your products and only 20% go to the homepage and the category pages. With Smart Shopping, nearly 100% of the clicks led to your product pages on your website. So as I said, Google Performance Max goes across Google's entire suite of products. So that includes YouTube, Display, Search, Discover, Gmail, and Maps. And when you compare that to Smart Shopping, you'll see that two of the inventory placements that Smart Shopping does not show up on is Google Discover and Maps. So if we want to make a Performance Max campaign act like a Smart Shopping campaign, one of the ways that we're gonna do it is by eliminating a couple of those placements so that Smart Shopping only appears on the core placements like Search, Display, and YouTube. So to do that, we need to create something that's called an asset list, asset group. So before we do that, let's talk about what a performance max asset group actually is. So a performance max asset group is made up from images, logos, headlines, descriptions, and videos that you add when you create your performance max campaign. So then Google creates advertisements for us on our behalf using the combination of assets that we provided. 
So to do this, we need to create an asset list asset group. So here's a couple screenshots here of how it can look. So you can give it any name that you would like, but for this exercise, I'm gonna call it no assets. And then you connect in your Google Merchant Center feed or the products that you want to show inside of your Performance Max campaign. And so that's what that bottom screenshot is here. So create an asset group, name it whatever you want, and then connect in your Merchant Center feed. So just as it sounds, you're going to leave everything blank inside of the asset group except for your final URL, your logo, and your business names. These are all things that were included inside of Smart Shopping. So to get a Performance Max campaign that mirrors a Smart Shopping campaign, you're certainly fine to include them here. And so once you do that and once you hit save, you're going to receive this message from Google that says this asset group needs and then they're going to start listing all the different assets. Um, so even though that message will appear, your asset group is still going to be eligible to show. And the reason for that is because you have connected in your Google Merchant Center. And so it's actually going to be displaying your products on the Google search page um, just like it did inside of Smart Shopping. And when you click the preview icon, you're gonna see that these placements include YouTube, search, and display. They are not gonna include Google Discover or Google Maps, and those are two of the different placements that Performance Max has that Smart Shopping did not. So in summary, you create an asset list asset group so that you do not give Google any assets to be able to create advertisements for you across uh, some of their placements like Google Discover and Google Maps. And you're really strict that Google can use your Google Merchant Center feed and it's going to show on placements that were similar to that of Smart Shopping. Something else that you could consider doing to make your Performance Max campaign act more like smart shopping is you could consider having a high ROAS or return on ad spend target or setting a low target CPA or cost per acquisition. What does this do? Well, since your performance targets are stricter, Google will only be able to show your, your products or your advertisements on those sources, on those placements that typically lead to conversions. And so Google Discover and Google Maps and sometimes even Google Display, if it's not in a retargeting or remarketing side, uh, is not likely to drive conversions. And so what you'll see is that most of the traffic that you get from your Performance Max campaign is going to come from those typical product listings that show inside of Google Search. Last but not least, one of the main differences between Smart Shopping and Performance Max is that Performance Max leverages a dynamic search ad component to it. So let's see how we can disable this so that it acts more like a Smart Shopping campaign. So to do this, you're gonna need to turn off Final URL Expansion. So what is Final URL Expansion? Well, with Final URL Expansion turned on, Google will actually crawl your website and find other landing pages um, based on the search query and the intent and generate dynamic ads that include a headline description and additional assets to match the content that is found on that landing page. So every page on your website is fair game for Google to create a search ad and then direct traffic to that page. So you might be thinking, okay, but we're not providing Google any assets. We're not providing them any descriptions or any headlines. So they won't be able to create any ads for us, even if they're crawling our website and, and choosing new landing pages. Well, starting in October of 2022, Google announced that they can actually use your landing page information. So text that is found on your landing page to dynamically create the ad text. So if you have final URL expansion turned on and you're directing traffic to these different landing pages that are found on your website, Google could use information on those landing pages uh, to show inside of your ad. And so if you have final URL expansion turned off, that cannot happen. So here's what it looks like inside of the Performance Max settings. You'll see final URL expansion, use more targeted URLs when it's likely to result in better performance. Uh, the default is going to be set to on, and so you'll need to make sure that you set it to off. I hope those insights were helpful for you and I'm curious. Let me know in the comments below if you've been seeing success with your Performance Max campaigns in their default form 
or if you're planning on making it act more like a smart shopping campaign. And since you've stuck around to the end, I have a free gift that I wanna give you. It's my seven day online marketing jumpstart PDF. You can get it at scottredgate.com slash jumpstart. If you're looking for simple tips that can get your business results, this is the document for you. It's completely free, and after you complete the steps outlined in this doc, not only will your website have a solid foundation to generate more leads or get more revenue, but you'll have a lot more confidence that you can manage your own digital marketing campaigns without hiring an agency. Thank you so much for watching this video. Until next time.